So it turns out that the slides are not going to be up here, but what I'm going to do is record my talk later and put it up on YouTube and share it on Twitter. So you all will get to see the slides. I'll probably just share the slides. That would be cool. All right. So my name is The Magician. Uh, this talk is Doors, Cameras, and Man Traps, Oh My. It is not a lockpicking talk, if that's what you're here for. This is a talk more about physical security and the practical business aspects of security in uh, the FizSec world and how to talk to clients and how you want to get into it if that's something you're interested in. Um, so, hi. Um, nice to meet you all. I've got my notes here, even though you don't have slides. I'm a member of the Open Organization of Lock Pickers. If you all have gone and picked locks, at Lockpick Village, then that's the tool group. Those are my people. Let them know the magician sent you and they'll set you up with some locks and some picks. I was a physical security assessor for Gold Sky Cybersecurity and they used to send me around the United States and break into buildings and I would show people how I would break into their buildings with them so they could try it, learn it, and the mitigation rate was much higher because then they understood how to do the, uh, uh, the physical exploit. Um, physical security was a, it still is a huge hobby for me, even though I'm not doing it professionally anymore. What I did was super straightforward. I would bring people around the building that they worked in, and I would teach them how to break into their own facility. Bringing the client with me gave them the option to try it themselves, and often the mitigation rate was much higher. Um, show and tell is basically what it came down to. I would show people what their vulnerabilities were, explain to them how to run the exploit so they could try it themselves, and then I would tell the people that had hired me what the problems were, what I showed their team, and how to get those things fixed. What this talk will cover is physical security controls, key questions that I used to ask clients, how to educate your clients without fear, uncertainty, and doubt, and how you can learn physical security if you want to get into it as a career field. Physical security controls are the first topic of conversation, and I'd like to start with doors. More often than not, that's the first thing you're going to test. Physical security, uh, there are a lot of mechanical components to doors, but here's the short list. Do perimeter doors have hinges that are exposed to the outside? Those hinges can be exploited. Can I slide something between the latch and the strike plate to pull the door open without a key or combination? Can I get tools over or under the door to manipulate the door handles from the outside? If I can run across double doors, can I manipulate crash bars, which are the bars that you shove open in server rooms. These are all resolvable exploits. Windows are the next physical security control I used to look at, and they're often overlooked. Insecure windows uh, can be opened or manipulated in similar ways to doors. They offer different challenges. In a lot of office spaces, some clients don't have policies about shoulder surfing or looking over the shoulder of a user to, to obtain information. This is low com a low complexity physical security risk. And uh, if someone is trying to establish operating hours of a business, PC operating systems used, or even information like browser type, looking through a window is extremely low effort and high yield. Fencing seems obvious at first. Uh, maybe folks have them in their homes or at office sites. Fencing establishes a clear perimeter and clearly sets an expectation of limited access. It would take a heck of an improviser to explain to a guard why you were walking around a parking lot or building at a locked and closed site. It's also near impossible to scale a fence in most environments during the day without attracting attention. Fencing is a passive security means, meaning it doesn't require any labor.
Bollards are a great security control. You've all seen bollards before. They are reinforced obstacles that prevent the use of a vehicle as a battering ram to create a point of entry in an otherwise defended structure. It's another passive security risk mitigation. Man traps, I think, are completely underutilized. You likely have seen these secure facilities where a room has two separate doors and typically two separate security access controls. For instance, one door has an RFID badge and a separate security door on the opposite side of the room has a biometric security control, like a fingerprint reader. These require some setup and require adherence to procedure. Additionally, it can be a challenge to get a flow of people through man traps, but they are an awesome control and typically you'll see them at banks. Cameras are one of the most, uh, are in most businesses and some homes now. If you have the funding at a job site, you can even have your camera actively monitored in a security operating center. Lots of small to mid-sized businesses just record video and reference it in incident response if something goes wrong or for forensic purposes. These are, there are many technologies in the world of cameras, but I firmly believe that Wi-Fi cameras are a poor, cho a poor choice in many environments Please out, uh, reach out to me if you want to hear that soapbox rant. Electronic access is a really cool area of security controls, especially in the world where now everyone has a flipper zero. Uh, most of you have some f form of token that your office has given you to get into your building, an RFID badge. Uh, you wave in front of a reader that opens the door maybe. RFID and NFC are great uh, and they're getting better, but the availability of the Flipper Zero makes these not necessarily the best way to get into a building as an only means of access. A PIN code might be functional, but if somebody can obtain that by observing you entering the PIN code, that isn't necessarily a great means of access either. I'm one of the many cyborgs in the hacker community, and I got an Im implant from Dangerous Things, so my left hand is RFID and NFC compatible, so I don't need a write to a badge, I can write to my hand. What matters though? Uh, knowing what matters to a particular entity is of extreme importance. I've done four minute break-ins from parking lot to server room and had clients tell me that actually all of their information is in the cloud. Those servers are just dev environments and the hard drives are encrypted, encrypted so they don't care. So knowing what is important to your clients is of critical importance. Access from the perimeter is something you actually want to talk to your client about, not just exploring it yourself. You wanna make sure that you're getting access to all the doors that they want you to have access to. There isn't any shame in saying, can you please show me your physical infrastructure and where all the doors are that are of a concern to you? then you can be sure that you're tackling all that client's concerns. Conversely, there might be doors that they don't think are a concern that you probably should bring to their attention. Because you are truly treated as a guest in the scenario of a security risk assessor, you can test guest badge policies firsthand. In some cases, if it's in scope, you can try enticing the, climb, the client to give you a guest badge and asking them where you can, uh, when, uh, if it's okay for you to go to the restroom. Many times you can find yourself in the office of a CEO or a CFO without any kind of supervision, sometimes hours after you were let in, without anyone hassling you. As a social engineering enthusiast, this is a, a huge topic. Entire companies are dedicated to just educating and empowering employees to ask as part of the security team for a company. There are quick points, uh, here are some quick points to the matter. Gamify your security training. A traveling trophy can go to the desk of a person with a, uh, the least clicks in an email fish, or maybe to someone who always locks their computer when they get up to go to the break room. Be creative and let employees know that they are an integral part to your security at the company and that they can be a huge line of defense. Every employee is part of the security team.
constructive criticism is always better than belittling somebody for their lack of security knowledge. How can you talk to a client? Uh, how you talk to a client will determine how they mitigate your findings. While there have been tons of technical talks about how to exploit mechanical components of physical security, there have been just a few that cover the specifics of educating clients on how to go about resolving their exploits. Saying things like this is really bad need to be replaced with, we have some really good opportunities here for positive change. Simple phrasing can mean a world of difference and can lead to a very different uh, side of client morale and also can determine whether or not they're going to hire you next year. Uh, the show and tell was always my favorite part, the demonstrations and solutions. Showing the defenders vulnerabilities on site is immensely fun and can have an extremely positive impact. Taking some, uh, talking, somebody, uh, on, talking somebody through how you can bypass a door uh, versus showing them how to do it have huge differences in the likelihood that an issue will be mitigated uh, or a solution implemented. These steps, uh, this steps in the process also get the most heads popping into the room. People get really excited when you show them how to do an underdoor slip uh, or uh, use a, uh, an underdoor tool or a uh, latch slip. Avoid fear, uncertainty, and doubt. This one's probably the most critical in my, in my, in my opinion. You want to avoid letting people know that things are bad. You want to make sure that even if something is really bad, good news, I'm here, I found this thing, now we can tackle it together and it won't be a problem anymore. Um, how to educate clients and provide a means for clients to contact you. You want to make sure that after you've done your test and you've written your report, you want to provide contacts that are officially uh, your work contacts for people to reach out to you and ask you follow-up questions. They're going to happen. Nobody knows everything. And even professionals might forget to provide some key information. Giving them a company email or a company phone number and requesting that they reach out to you during company time is really important because then they can reach out if they have some sort of immediate concern or just if they want you to have uh, to, to return later. That point of contact is pretty critical. Now, this is something that might be important to all of you. How can you get into physical security? I'm going to talk about some podcasts, YouTube channels, and Udemy access options for you to get into physical security. And I'm old, so I'm going to hold this very close to my face. Um, I feel education is the most important aspect in hacking and security. That's not to say that a four-year degree or anything like that is necessary. The different approaches to learning are varied, and there are a few podcasts. YouTube and Udemy were big wins for me personally. If you want to get into lock picking or just see some jaw-dropping feats of lock exploits, then look no further than Lock Picking Lawyer. The content of his channel is consistently enjoyable and never stale or boring. If you are an auditory learner, then podcasts are fantastic. Darknet Diaries is amazing with great storytelling and incredible guests and lessons learned are valuable and always come in an entertaining package. If you want direct attention towards certification, I think Mike Myers does a great job on Udemy and anything and everything by the Exam Cram Book Company I think is fantastic. Simply learning uh, how to do physical security from books isn't necessarily for everybody, but it worked for me because I could revisit individual concepts very quickly. Dale Carnegie has a book called How to Win Friends and Influence People. If you want to do physical on-site pen testing, where you're not going to be announcing your presence. Practical Lock Picking by Deviant Olaf is a fantastic technical read on physical security and lock picking. The Art of Deception by Kevin Mitnick. It's a little flourishy, but the content is really good. Um, what Everybody is Saying by Joe Navarro will help you with body language. Uh, and again, I just want to call out Exam Cram. They're really good, and they give you uh, extra tests, and they give you flashcards. You got the slides? Just in time, Ian. Um, 
So these are three people who helped me a lot as I was getting started. If you find somebody on YouTube or at a con that speaks to you personally, the language they're using sounds good, the ethos sound good, you just vibe with it, reach out to them, send them an email, throw them some, some information on Twitter. I brought cards if what I'm saying sounds interesting, please walk up to me and I will give you some. Um, Deviant, Ian, and Jason helped me a ton. He's right here, wave at him, embarrass him. Um, definitely reach out to the people that you find interesting. We as hackers enjoy telling stories. So we're not going to be annoyed by you, I, I promise. Um, take guided courses. Taking guided courses, courses are expensive, but being able to raise your hand and say, I don't understand the thing is a really, really, really big deal. And being right in front of the person or on the other end of a video call makes that exchange very quick and very efficient. Uh, attend local meetings. If you've got a DEF CON group meetup near you, please go, please meet people. It might be the opportunity that you need to get the job that you want, or just give you the person that you need to talk to to learn how to do the thing that you're trying to do. Um, oh no, laptop. Okay, how to learn physical security. Other than just taking courses, reading books, go to a local tool meetup or Go to LPV right here at DEF CON. Try to pick locks. Have fun. No one's going to judge you if you don't know how to. Those are the best people. And we'll be able to give you the proper techniques off the bat so you don't have to worry about spending hours or days doing it the wrong way. I just want to say a special thanks to my friends and family, all the Orlando hackers that have helped me out. Hi. Um, thank you all. Hack all the things. If you have any questions, please talk to me. Um, here's me. There's my email address, my Twitter, and my LinkedIn. Take a picture. I don't mind pictures. I, I can't see all of you because of the lights, but hi, hi everybody, hi. <laughs> please reach out to me if you have questions about physical security or breaking into buildings or you just want some stories. I'm the Magician. I hope you have a fun time at DEF CON. <laughs>